Hello friends, my name is Aubrey. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to have you all here with me today. So today we are going to go over my fall TBR. So it is the last week of August and so for me that means that fall starts next week. I know that that's not technically true, um, but for me seasons definitely feel like they go with certain months. So September, October, and November constitute fall in my head. So if you have not seen any of my previous seasonal TBR videos, what I do is I go through all of the books that I'm most excited to read that season, and then I show you all of the books that I have sorted into my seasonal categories, as I call them. Um, so I have like priority books on my TBR that I'm like most excited to read in general, and then I have my four seasonal categories, and I do switch those out on my bookcases um, each season. So at the end of this video, you'll see me shelving all of the fall books. So these are books that to me just represent fall, either because they take place in the fall or because the vibes or aesthetic match that season in some way in my head. Um, so that way you'll get to see all of the books that are kind of like on my fall TBR. Now, does this mean that I'm going to read all of these books in the fall? Not necessarily. Um, I am definitely a mood reader, and so even though these are the books that I'm most excited to read this fall, that doesn't mean that I will get to all of them. It doesn't mean I won't be reading other things this season, so just to kind of put that out there. Um, these are just the ones that I am like really excited to read in the fall. They're the ones that just for some reason are like higher up on the priority list compared to the other books in my like fall category. I also, before I get started, want to kind of apologize if my voice sounds weird or I sound congested at all. I'm so sorry. I've been feeling under the weather. <laughs> um, for like the last week, so it's finally starting to like abate and I'm finally starting to feel a little bit better, but it's it's still lingering, so I apologize for that. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it. I think I have 14 books in like the most excited group, so we're just gonna go through each of those. So the first one that I have to show you that I'm most excited to read uh, this fall season is Babel and Arcane History by R.F. Kuang. So I have heard so much praise for this book and I haven't read anything by R.F. Kuang yet and honestly out of the ones she's written this is the one that I'm like that I really think I'm going to enjoy and it is like very academic it has an academic setting so for me that really fits autumn. <laughs> um, I guess just because like going back to school and the idea of being on a college campus for some reason to me just definitely fits like autumn with the trees and the leaves changing and I have no idea if this is set in the fall but I feel like it fits that season so. eighteen twenty eight. Robin Swift, orphaned by cholera in Canton, is brought to London by the mysterious Professor Lovell. There, Robin trains for years in Latin, Ancient Greek, and Chinese, all in preparation for the day he'll enroll in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. The tower and its students are the world's center for translation and, more importantly, magic. Silverworking, the art of manifesting the meaning lost in translation using enchanted silver bars, has made the British unparalleled in power, as the arcane craft serves the empire's quest for colonization. For Robin, Oxford is a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. But knowledge obeys power, and as a Chinese boy raised in Britain, he realizes serving Babel means betraying his motherland. As his studies progress, Robin finds himself caught between Babel and the shadowy Hermes Society, an organization dedicated to stopping imperial expansion. When Britain pursues an unjust war with China over silver and opium, Robin must decide. Can powerful institutions be changed from within, or does revolution always require violence? That sounds so good. It, it, sound, it sounds like it's going to have a lot of commentary on like colonization and empires and all of that, and, and the way that people sometimes seek to use other cultures for their own benefit instead of appreciating them for what they are. I don't know. I think it's going to be really interesting, and I'm very excited to read it. 
Then the next book that I have on here is actually really interesting. So if you've seen my previous book calls, then you may have seen me get this one because this is a fairly recent acquisition. Um, but I think the premise sounds so intriguing. I've never seen a book that's written quite like this. Um, but this is The Grimoire of Grave Fates. It is created by Hannah Alcaf and Margaret Owen, but it's written by all of these authors. And also, look at that cover. It looks like, on the dust jacket, like it's an old book. Oh, it's so pretty. Crack open your spell book and enter the world of the illustrious Galileo Academy for the Extraordinary. A prestigious school for young sorcerers, the Galileo Academy has recently undergone a comprehensive overhaul, reinventing itself as a roaming academy in which students of all cultures and identities are celebrated. In this new Galileo, every pupil is welcome, but some people aren't so happy with the recent changes. That includes everyone's least favorite professor, Septimius Dropwort, a stodgy old man known for his harsh rules and harsher punishments. But when the professor's body is discovered on school grounds under mysterious circumstances, the academy's students must solve the murder themselves before the lens of suspicion turns on them. Told from 18 diverse perspectives with chapters written by 18 best-selling and critically acclaimed authors, The Grimoire of Grave Fates follows Galileo's best and brightest young sorcerers as they race to discover the truth behind Dropwort's mystifying death. Each of them is confident that only they have the skills needed to untangle the web of secrets hidden within Galileo's halls. But they're about to discover that even for straight-A students, magic doesn't always play by the rules. So, that sounds so intriguing. It's like written each character, I'm assuming, is written by a different author. And I don't know exactly how it's going to be set up, like if each chapter is going to be based on a different character or what, I'm not sure. But it sounds so cool. We have a magic school, we have a mysterious death, we have these students who are trying to solve it because each of them thinks that they are capable of doing so. I think it sounds so neat and it sounds so fun for the fall. Hopefully it'll be a little bit spooky, I hope. But yeah, I'm really excited to try this one and I hope I like it. It sounds really interesting and really fun. Okay, so then the next book that I have is actually part of like a series. It's a mystery series um, that I've never read any of the books in this series. And I, this is not the first one, but it is the one that I am most intrigued about and I'm most interested in reading. And it also is going to be perfect for October. So that is... Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. This is one of her Hercule Poirot mysteries. So the mysteries that are being solved by detect, I think he's a detective. I think he's a detective, Hercule Poirot. Um, and like I said, I've never read any of these before. I have read some Agatha Christie, but not any of her Poirot stories, but this one sounds so cool and it's perfect for October. I mean, it's called Halloween Party. And I know that they made a movie of this fairly recently, but they changed the name and it's called, the movie is called A Haunting in Venice, I, th I think. I think that's the name. I don't know why they changed the name because I really like Halloween Party. I don't know. Um, but I am so excited to have this edition because I really wanted this cover and it kept being out of stock everywhere because all of the ones that I was seeing were like the new ones in honor of the movie. But anyway, I managed to find a copy and I'm so excited to read it. So I am planning to read this one this October. At a Halloween party, Joyce, a hostile 13 year old, boasts that she once witnessed a murder. I'm not sure why you would boast about that. Like, is that, I don't, that's not an accomplishment. I'm not sure why she thinks that that's, that's something to boast about. When no one believes her, she storms off home, but within hours, her body is found still in the house, drowned in an apple bobbing tub. That night, Hercule Poirot is called in to find the evil presence, but first he must establish whether he is looking for a murderer or a double murderer. So yeah, really like short premise. There's not a lot of details there. And I'm not a fan of like 
that our victim here is a child. I don't love that. Um, but I do like Agatha Christie and I do really want to try this. So I'm really excited to read this. And because it takes place at a Halloween party, like I said, I do want to read it in October, probably maybe the week of Halloween, I'm thinking. But yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. All right, so then the next book is actually a graphic novel, and it is the first book in a series of graphic novels, and that is Hooky by, and you're, please forgive me, I'm not going to say the author's name correctly, and I'm so sorry, Miriam Bonastre Tour? Tour? I'm pretty sure it's French, and I've said before in videos, I don't know how to pronounce French names and French words, and I'm so, so sorry, but this looks so cute and so fun and I do know that it is a series and I'm just going to show you the art on here. I think it was originally, yeah, if you look right there, it was originally a webtoon, but look at how cute this is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. This has been on my TBR for a while and I really want to try to get to it this fall. Two twins, one prophecy, a whole lot of hijinks. When 12-year-olds Danny and Dorian missed the bus to magic school, they didn't expect to be declared traitors to their own kind. But thanks to a mishap with a dragon egg, a broken broom, and a high-profile prisoner, their faces are unwanted posters throughout the country. Chased by powerful families seeking the prophesied king of witches, and royals searching for missing princes, the twins don't know whom to trust. Luckily, they aren't alone. With a local troublemaker, a princess, and a teacher who can see the future on their side, the twins might just clear their names, but can they heal their torn kingdom? So yeah, as I said, this was originally a webtoon, a very, very popular one from what I understand. Um, and the art style just looks adorable. And it's about these twin witches, and they look so cute. And I love reading books about witches in the fall, like witches, vampires, all of that. I think that they're just really good for the fall, for autumn time, so I am really excited to get to this one. And it is full color, which is fantastic. <laughs> then the next book that we have on this list is actually a cozy fantasy. Everyone seems to have read it, everyone seems to love it, and I really want to know what all the hype is about. So that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. <clears throat> and this is the first in a series, I think, of the same name. There is a sequel out, Bookshops and Bone Dust. So if I like this one, I have more to look forward to. A novel of high fantasy and low stakes. After a lifetime of bounties and bloodshed, Viv is hanging up her sword for the last time. The battle-weary orc aims to start fresh, opening the first ever coffee shop in the city of Thune. But rivals old and new stand in the way of success, not to mention the fact that no one has the faintest idea what coffee actually is. If Viv wants to put the blade behind her and make her plans a reality, she won't be able to go it alone. But the true rewards of the uncharted path are the travelers you meet along the way. And whether drawn together by ancient magic, a flaky pastry, or a freshly brewed cup, they may become partners, family, and something deeper than she ever could have dreamed. It sounds so cute, and it does actually say, I just noticed that there's a, like, a bonus prequel story in this edition, so that's really exciting. But yeah, it's so cute, the cover is, and like I said, so many people love Legends and Lattes and talk about how it is just, like, it's one of those quintessential cozy fantasies, and I love cozy books, <laughs> um, so I am really looking forward to reading this one. And anything that takes place in a coffee shop, to me, just feels very autumnal. I personally don't drink coffee. I prefer tea or, like, in the fall, a really good hot chocolate with whipped cream and chocolate syrup. <sighs> I love hot chocolate. Um, but I do like coffee shops, and I like the smell, and it just, it feels like it's going to be just so cozy and just perfect for, like, the days turning crisp and the leaves changing and, yeah. So I'm excited to, to read this one. Hopefully I'll be able to get to it this fall. Then the next book on this list is Masters of Death by Olive e. Blake. So I haven't read any Olive e. Blake yet. I know that lots of people love her works, um, particularly the Atlas Six, like that series. Um, is that what the series is called? I know that's the name of the first book, but I don't know if that's the name of the series. But anyway, 
Out of her books, this one sounds most like I'm gonna like it, and I got this really pretty edition from Alcrate. Like, it's so cool and, like, kind of creepy. Viola Merrick is a struggling real estate agent and a vampire, but her biggest problem currently is that the house she needs to sell is haunted. The ghost haunting the old house has been murdered, and until he can solve the mystery of how he died, he refuses to move on. Fox Demora is a medium, and though he is also most definitely a shameless fraud, he isn't entirely without his uses, seeing as he's actually the godson of death. When Viola seeks out Fox to help her with the ghost-infested mansion, he becomes inextricably involved in a quest that neither he nor Vi expects or wants. But with the help of an unruly wait, okay, there's like a typo here. But with the help of an unruly, sharp voiced angel, a love stricken reaper, and a few mindfulness practicing creatures, Vi and Fox soon discover that the difference between a mysterious lost love and, an, and an annoying dead body isn't nearly as distinct as they thought. So this sounds like it's gonna be really fun. We have that definitely like spooky haunted house vibe with like a vampire and a medium and other supernatural creatures but it also sounds like it's going to be funny I think <laughs> um I don't know I just think I'm gonna have a good time with this and I think the whole concept of like selling a haunted house is so interesting because it's like when you're talking like in the real world right I think there's like a clause I was listening to an episode of Lore by uh, Aaron Mankey recently. It's a, a podcast if you've never heard of it before. It's a really, really good podcast. Um, if you like macabre, creepy uh, murders, like stories about murders and things, but you also like like folklore or ghost stories, it's a really, really interesting podcast. I love it. But I was listening to an episode recently where he was talking about haunted houses and like the selling of them. And I think that there's like this law or this rule that you have to disclose to potential buyers if the house is believed to be haunted, which I think is really interesting. Um, but anyway, I'm, I just like having listened to that episode recently, it may just makes this like stand out more in my head, I think. I don't know. But I think it's going to be really, really fun, and I'm excited to try this book and see how I feel about all of you Blake's work. So next we have the first manga on this list, and that is Phantom Tales of the Night by Matsuri. Um, and this is the first volume of the series. It's the only one that I have so far, because I do want to try it before getting into later volumes. So I know that these have a number of like short stories all interconnected with this character. So it says, Your secret now belongs to me. Welcome to M Murakumo Inn, a curious establishment that opens its doors to the troubled masses, human or otherwise. But the equally curious innkeeper takes compensation only in the form of one's deepest secrets. Who will come calling today? So this is our innkeeper. And I did kind of like look at the first story in here a bit and kind of like read through it. And I'm pretty sure that he is not human. Um, and it is kind of creepy. Like it's, this is definitely not cozy. There is some like kind of creepy stuff, like content that happens in here. But it is a series, so there are more volumes of this out. And I do want to try it. And I really like Japanese mythology which I'm hoping there will be some of that in here, like Japanese ghost stories and lore and things like that. So I'm really interested to try it. I really hope I like it. Um, I really hope it's not too horror-y because honestly, I'm not a huge horror person in general. And like, I think seeing it in picture form, I don't know that I would love that. So I hope it's not too horror-y. I can handle creepy and kind of scary and spooky, but I don't know. I'm I'm intrigued to find out more about this guy. And honestly, when I bought this, the art on the cover, and like you can see the back, was definitely an influence. 100% because it's beautiful. And the other covers that I've seen for this series are equally gorgeous. So we are halfway done. We have seven more to go. 
This one is the first book in a series as well, and I do actually have the second book here, and it is a middle grade series called Ravenfall. So the first book has the same name as the series, also called Ravenfall, and it is by Kaylin Josephson. And look at how pretty and adorable this cover is with these tiny little ghosts and the creepy house. Oh, it's so pretty. So the back says... One magical inn, two kids with supernatural powers, and an ancient Celtic creature trying to destroy their world by Halloween night. Honestly, that's really all I need to want to read this, but I will still read the synopsis for you guys. 13-year-old Annabella Balanque has never been normal, even by her psychic family's standards. Every generation uses their abilities to help run the Ravenfall Inn, a sprawling, magical B&B at the crossroads of the human world and the other world. But it's hard to contribute when your only power is foreseeing death. That would be like a terrible thing to just constantly see how people are going to die or like when death is approaching someone, especially for a kid. Like that would be really traumatic, I think. So when 14-year-old Colin Pierce arrives at Ravenfall searching for his missing older brother and the supernatural creature who killed their parents, Anna jumps at the chance to help, but the, mis but the mysteries tied to Colin go much deeper than either of them expects. As the two team up to find answers, they unearth Colin's family's secret past and discover that Colin has powers beyond his imagination. And now the supernatural creature, one with eerie origins in Celtic mythology, is coming after him. If Anna and Colin can't stop the creature by Halloween night, the veil to the other world could be torn open which would spell destruction for their world as they know it. That sounds so fun. And it's a middle grade, which means that it's going to... I, I tend to like kind of autumnal spooky middle grades. I don't know. I think they're really fun. And like I said, I have the second book in the series, which I think is called Hollowthorn. Can I see it? Yeah, it's called Hollowthorn. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, so if I like this one, I'll be able to also read the second book in the series. And... I don't know, it just sounds so fun. I love Celtic legends and lore as well, so that's going to be interesting. I don't know how in-depth they're going to go into actual lore there, but it sounds fun. We have this creepy bed and breakfast and like kids with powers and I don't know. I just think it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. And it takes place in October, or at least part of it does, because they're trying to fix this or solve this by Halloween, so perfect for fall. So I'm a little ashamed to admit I haven't read this next book because it has been on my TBR for literally so long and it is like a staple in the fantasy community and I really want to get into this series so badly. Um, and for some reason it feels like it will fit autumn, like fit fall to me. So that's what I'm planning on reading and I hope I get to it this, this season. But that is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Farseer trilogy, which is the first series in Realm of the Elderlings. The kingdom of the six duchies is on the brink of civil war when news breaks, when news breaks that the crown prince has fathered a bastard son and is shamed into abdication. The child's name is Fitz, and he is despised. Raised in the castle stables, only the company of the king's fool, the ragged children of the lower city, and his unusual affinity with animals provide Fitz with any comfort. To be useful to the crown, Fitz is trained as an assassin, and to use the traditional magic of the Farseer family. But his tutor, allied to another political faction, is determined to discredit, even kill him. Fitz must survive, for he may be destined to save the kingdom." So yeah, I've heard so much about this series, and I know that it's supposed to be really emotional and like really painful at times, um, and that's one reason I've just put it off. Not that I have a problem with sad books. I read a lot of fantasy, and bad things happen in fantasy books often. <laughs> so it's, it's just that like I've heard so many people talk about how heartbreaking this series can be, and I don't know. That just... I, don't, I need to, I feel like, be in the right headspace to read something that I know is going to be sad. So, I don't know. But I do really want to read it, and I don't know why, but medieval settings, 
like those types of settings for some reason make me think of fall. Maybe it's from going to the Renaissance Festival as a kid, um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't really know why I have it in the fall TBR, but it just feels fallish to me. It feels like it will fit the autumnal vibes, so that's why it's here, I guess, and I do really want to read it. Hopefully I'll get to it this year. I guess we'll see. We'll see. But I, I, I am really excited to read this because I've heard that Robin Hobb is just like a master of her craft. But yeah, so that is Assassin's Apprentice. This next book I actually got recently, so you may have seen it in a book haul if you've seen my other, my previous videos. Um, and that is Scarlet by Genevieve Cognon. This is the first book and I think it's called The Scarlet Revolution. I think is the name of the series. I don't have it in front of me right now, so don't quote me on that. Um, but I am so excited for this. I wanted to read this for a while, but I really wanted this specific edition because I really like the cover art more than the US edition. I'll put a picture so you guys can see that one. But I just really prefer this cover art. And so I saw it on Blackwell's, which if you don't know, Blackwell's is a bookstore in the UK and they offer free shipping to the US. So I was able to get the cover that I love, and I'm so excited to read this. For one English maid, the stakes have never been higher. Revolutionary France is no place to be, especially for aristocrat vampires facing the guillotine. But the League of the Scarlet Pimper Pimpernel, Pimpernel, that is how you say that, I think, <laughs> um, is determined to rescue them, and they have an ace up their sleeve. Eleanor, a lowly maid from an English estate with a striking resemblance to French royalty. For Eleanor, the League and its legendary deeds are little more than rumor, until she's drawn into the, its most dangerous plot yet. The mission? Travel to France in disguise, impersonate Queen Marie Antoinette, and rescue the royal family. If they succeed, it'll be the heist of the century. To carry out the League's ambitions, Eleanor will have to break every rule of maid's etiquette. She'll disguise herself as a man, negotiate with powerful vampires, and evade the revolution's chief agent, Citizen Chauvelin. Obsessed with the elusive Scarlet Pim Pimpernel, Chauvelin will stop at nothing to unmask him, even if Eleanor pays the price. But there's more to fear than ardent revolutionaries, for Eleanor stumbles across a centuries-old war between vampires and their fiercest enemy, and they're out for blood. Oh, this sounds so fun. French Revolution with vampires and this mysterious enemy. I don't know what they could be. Ah, oh, it sounds so fun. And we have conspiracies and spies. I'm so excited to read this. And the only reason it's in the fall category is because vampires. That's it. <laughs> um, but I, I'm so excited to read this one. And I'm so glad that I got this beautiful cover. And I think the second book, if it's not already out now, it's coming out soon. So the second one in the series. So I'll be able to continue this if I get to it <laughs> soon and enjoy it. So that's really exciting. Okay, this one has also been on my TBR for a while and I just haven't gotten to it yet. And I really want to. Um, I don't know when the next book in the series is coming out. Because again, this is the first book in a series. And the second one is not out yet as far as I'm aware, and I don't know if it even has a release date yet or not. I'll need to maybe look into that. But that is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. This is the first book in, I think it's the Talents? The Talents, I think is what the series is called. And it looks so pretty. I love the cover on this. Click how shiny. <laughs> England, 1882. In Victorian London, two children with mysterious powers are hunted by a figure of darkness, a man made of smoke. Sixteen-year-old Charlie Ovid, despite a brutal childhood in Mississippi, doesn't have a scar on him. His body heals itself whether he wants it to or not. Marlowe, a foundling from a w railway freight car, shines with a strange bluish light. He can melt or mend flesh. When a jaded female detective is recruited to escort them to safety, all three begin a journey into the nature of difference and belonging and the shadowy edges of the monstrous. 
What follows is a story of wonder and betrayal, from the gaslit streets of London and the wooden theatres of Meiji-era Tokyo, to an eerie estate outside Edinburgh, where other children with gifts, the talents, have been gathered. There, the world of the dead and the world of the living threaten to collide. <sighs> And as secrets within the Institute unfurl, Marlowe, Charlie, and the rest of the talents will discover the truth about their abilities and the nature of what is stalking them, that the worst monsters sometimes come bearing the sweetest gifts. Riveting in its scope and exquisitely written, Ordinary Monsters presents a catastrophic vision of the Victorian world and of the gifted, broken children who must save it. Okay, reading that made me, like, it just reignited my excitement for this book. So I definitely think it's going to be dark and spooky and creepy. And I love that we are in a Victorian era setting because I just really enjoy those settings. And to me, they really go well with either fall or winter. So I feel like this could also be very easily a wintry book. But... We're also going to Tokyo in the Meiji era, and that sounds so fun, and like Scotland and to Edinburgh, which is a place that I've always wanted to go, and I just feel like this is going to be so good, and I feel like it's going to have a lot to say about how people treat those who are different from us, which is always commentary that I love to see in books, so I'm really excited to try this, and I am going to have to do research and see if there's any news about the second book in the series, because I really, really think I'm going to love this, and I don't necessarily want to have to wait <laughs> forever to read the next one, so not not to rush the author, you know. They can take as long as they need to produce their work. Um, but just like, you know, I feel like if I read this now... <laughs> And the second book doesn't even have a release date yet. Like, am I gonna get antsy waiting on it? I don't know. But that may not stop me. I may have to read this this year because it just sounds so wonderful and good and spooky and like it's gonna have a lot to say and we're going to such cool settings and I'm just really excited. <laughs> if you can't tell. Then we have The Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep by H.G. Perry, and this is a book that I'm really thinking I'm going to read in November when we're getting closer to winter time, because it just seems like it's going to be really good for those like cooler days and cooler nights. Uh, it just seems foggy and mysterious, and I don't know. I just think it's going to fit. For his entire life, Charlie Sutherland has concealed an unusual ability he can't quite control. He can bring characters from books into the real world. His older brother Rob, a young lawyer with a normal house, a normal fiancé, and an utterly normal life, hopes that this strange family secret will disappear with disuse and he will be discharged from his life's duty of protecting Charlie and the real world from each other. But then literary characters start causing trouble in their city, making threats about destroying the world. And for once, it isn't Charlie's doing. There's someone else who shares his power. It's up to Charlie and a reluctant Rob to stop them, and hopefully before anyone gets to the end. As in, the end of the book. <laughs> the end of the story. I feel like this is going to be fun. I have never heard anyone talk about it, but it just like the cover really feels Victorian to me, and I don't know that it's got like a Victorian setting. I don't think it does. Maybe the character is from a Victorian setting? I don't know. But it looks so fun! It sounds so fun! And it's, I don't know, like I said, it just feels probably entirely based on the cover. Very misty and mysterious, and I just feel like it's gonna really work well in that transition period between fall and winter. Two books left. So first in these last two, and they are both, so we have one graphic novel and one manga left to talk about. So the first one is The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. This is the first book in the series of the same name. So it is a series of graphic novels and they are full color, which is great. Even magic has rules. Everyone in Aster's family is born with magic. Boys grow up to be shapeshifters, girls into witches. No exceptions. But Aster can't seem to get the hang of shapeshifting. Instead, he spends his time spying on the witchery lessons the girls are getting. 
He seems to have a knack for casting spells and wants to know more, but the only person he can share his growing gift with is Charlie, a girl from the non-magical side of town. Then, during a night of shape-shifting practice, one of the boys goes missing. Aster knows he can search for the boy with the witchcraft he's been secretly learning. Could breaking his family's most important tradition save the day, or ruin everything? So, I love characters who that don't always fit into the mold that they're supposed to be kind of pressed into, and that sounds like Aster, and it just sounds really cute. It is, I think, like a middle grade graphic novel series, and the art style is adorable, and we've got kids like learning magic and studying spells and shape-shifting, and I don't know, it just sounds like it's going to be really fun for fall, so I'm really excited to try this one. It's also been on my TBR for a while, and so I really need to get to it. And as I said, it is the first in a series. If I like this one, I have more to look forward to. Okay, and the final book on my, like, priority, most excited for fall books is Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Shirahama. So this is volume one. I do have the first three volumes in the series, and this is a manga series. A Touch of Magic. Meet young Coco, curious and bright, and desperate to learn how magic's wrought, but witches keep their secrets hidden tight and witches, Coco knows, are born, not taught. Then one day Coco spies upon a witch, as he prepares the charms for which she yearns, and sees, and sees that, like her skill with thread and stitch, the truth is, magic's something she can learn. Now with this knowledge, Coco starts to try to teach herself the witch's way with charms, and yet her aspirations go awry, as Coco's magic causes grievous harm. To set things right, young Coco leaves her home, and so begins the tale within this tome. That's so cool that the synopsis is in verse, that it's a poem. I think that's neat. And the art for this is just absolutely beautiful. And so I've heard so much praise for this series. It's supposed to be very cute and sweet and cozy, but also have some darker content as well. And so many people love it so much, and I really want to try it. And as I said, I like to read witchy books in the fall, so I think that it's going to be really good for the season. And I do have the first three volumes, as I mentioned, but there are more than that already out. So if I like it, I have a lot more to read, and I'm super excited. I always enjoy getting into a new manga series. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to try this one just because I've heard so much praise for it, and it sounds so fun. And like I said, I love a character who like is trying to kind of find their own way in the world and doesn't necessarily fit with what they're being told. And that sounds like Coco. She sounds so cute. And I'm really excited to try this. And also, it's just going to be visually stunning to read because the art is just gorgeous. So that's a plus as well. <laughs> All right, so those are all of the books that I am most excited to read in the fall. Um, so now I'm going to take you to Past Aubrey and you get to see all of the books that are on my fall TBR.
Okay, so that is everything. That is every book that I have in my like fall category on my TBR list. So I would love to hear what books you are planning to read this fall or if you have any that you would like to recommend to me that you really think fit that autumnal aesthetic or that autumnal feeling. Um, Because even though I have books on my TBR, my TBR is ever growing. So I'm always excited to hear about what you guys love. Um, So for today's emoji, let's do a fall leaf. So pick your favorite autumnal leaf. I'm not sure how many there are in the emojis, but if you want to leave one with your comment or if you want to leave a comment but don't know what to say, feel free to leave just a little autumn leaf down there. And I love to see all of your comments. I love to talk to you all. It makes me very happy. So Again, if you have any fall books you'd like to recommend or any that you want to talk about that you're excited to read, I would love to hear about it. Um, Or if you're excited to read any of these now that you've heard about them, or if you have read any of these and think that I should be more excited about them or prioritize them, I'd love to hear your thoughts and to talk to you guys. Just please keep all of the comments spoiler free. And yeah. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I'm so glad that we're moving into fall and spooky season and Halloween, and I'm, I'm so excited. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!